Hello, I'm Jim Larson, and this is another installment in Sterling Engine Design Talks. And we're in my workshop today, and so I'm just showing you a little bit of the background there of some of the engines that I've put together over the last few years. And this is the room where I come and I do my work and my designing, and a lot of my writing and stuff happens right in here. And so what I wanted to talk to you about today is the horizontal pop can Sterling engine. It's received quite a few views on YouTube. It's getting kind of popular again. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about the some of the design characteristics that went into building that engine, because I know a lot of people like to design and build their own. So we'll get right to it. The engine that you see on the left here is uh, the Grizzly uh, horizontal Sterling engine. And that's an engine that you can buy as a kit and assemble it. You can get it in two different fashions. You can get it in a pre-machined kit, so you're just doing the final assembly, or they'll also sell it to you with blueprints and a bunch of raw material so that you can make your own. Now, there's a couple things I want to point out to you here on this engine. This is the hot cylinder right here. Inside this tube, the displacer moves back and forth. So the, the displacement of the heating chamber is really not very large. The cooling section of the engine starts right here where you see these fins and so this is cooling this block uh, works to do cooling and then there's also cooling fins on the drive cylinder and a couple of things you need to note here is one is there's a lot more uh, surface area to the cooling side of the engine than there is to the heating side of the engine and there's a good reason for that the heat has to get out at least as easily as it gets in. Otherwise, heat will accumulate in the engine. The engine will overheat and it'll stop working. So the cooling side has to work as efficiently or perhaps more efficiently than the warming side does. And so that's one of the principles of the horizontal Stirling engine that we're going to bring into the design for the pop can engine. Now this is the horizontal pop can Stirling engine and even though this is the heating side and it looks like it's larger than the cooling side is if you turn it up and you look inside you can see that this the heating element this heating displacement space in here is very small so this is just a hood that's intended to capture the rising heat and redirect it towards the heating side or the base of the motor and then this cylinder acts as the cooling side. So the cooling side of the engine is actually much larger as far as square surface area than the, the heating side of it is. Another interesting thing that you almost have to do with aluminum engines is create some type of insulating barrier between the hot and the cold. If you want the engine to run without adding ice or cold water. If you want it to be just an air-cooled engine, what you need to do is you need to prevent heat from flowing from the hot side to the cool side and creating what's called a thermal short. So this, these pieces of plywood with a silicon barrier in between are intended to stop the flow of heat moving through the body of the engine. So it's not only a way to assemble the motor, it's also a way to prevent that thermal short from occurring. And that's one of the reasons why this engine will run on just air cooling is because there's uh, the, the heat that goes through the engine has to go through the working fluid inside, or which is the, the air that's being heated on this side and cooled on this side. So some people have asked why I left the tails on when I made all my connecting rods and shafts. And primarily I leave those on there because I want to be able to make adjustment. So a lot of the shafts and things that I built, I put this little bend in here. Um, might have to change the angle to get to see that one, but there's kind of a Z-shaped bend. And that gives you the ability to twist that with a pair of pliers and adjust the length. And then leaving a little tail on the end here lets you tighten or loosen this connection so that you can make that adjustment and you can tighten it or loosen it depending on what's there. So one of the questions that came was um, 
how how tight does this hole need to be and, and how do you um, seal that up? Because I want this engine to run for more than just an hour or so, I use a piece of steel. And the steel has a hole punched in it that's the same size as the shaft that's going through it. And I've I've given some clues on how you can do that in the plans so that uh, as you build it, you can get one that's going to work. If, if this hole is too big, pressure will leak in and out as the engine tries to cycle. And instead of that air pressure making the wheel turn, the air pressure will simply bleed out. So same type of thing is happening here on this side. Uh, we have an articulation in this connecting shaft because this shaft is is moving straight in and out because the displacer is moving in there. So it's kind of almost on a track. But here's the Z-bend and here's the long tail on here. So with, with this motor, there's actually um, two discs on the flywheel. And it's a real simple connection to put them on that shaft in the middle. There's just a piece of wood that's stuck to each one. It's real easy with a square piece of wood to find the middle of the hole uh, or the middle of the wood. So you can put a hole in there. So that's how you get that thing centered up right on there. So it spins nice and true. So that's the basic principles of this motor. It's really quite easy. Um, the heating side is smaller, considerably smaller than the cooling side. And that allows the air cooling to work because we know that um, this side is going to have more surface area for radiating out the heat after it's been processed through the motor. And then there's a thermal barrier between the two sides. There's also some, some metal lining on here because this side has a tendency to get hot. And this adhesive that you see here, this is a high temperature silicone. Uh, comes from the auto parts store. And so everything on this side is built to tolerate the heat, so it can get quite warm. In fact, this engine has gotten warm enough during running that it's uh, actually kind of burnt some of the paint off of the cans. So you have to be careful about that. So if you have any questions or you're, can, uh, you're still interested in learning out more about the theory behind this, uh, leave a comment on the video or visit sterlingbuilder.com and you can see my contact information there and we can have a good discussion about it. So have fun with your Sterling engines.